You all keep talking about the intended victim and how we should take pity on Kendall because, after all, Stuart wasn't supposed to die. <clears throat> Kendall meant to shoot Adam. I don't care what was supposed to happen. My husband is gone forever. And it's because of you. You may have shot one bullet, but you killed two of us that night. And you all keep talking and talking about what Stuart would want. Well, we'll never know what Stuart would want, will we? Because he's dead! Damn it, doesn't anybody care? Oh, no, please, please, go away from me. You're the worst of all, defending the woman who killed my husband. You make me sick, Liza. You all Mom. make me sick just Mom. standing here pleading and huddling here pleading for mercy. When that cold blooded monster showed none of it. Oh my God, she just left him there, lying on the ground while the light and the life seeped out of him. Well, where was your mercy then, Kendall? I hope you suffer for every second of every minute of the rest of your miserable life. And when you die, I hope you rot in hell. Well, just uh, be prepared. We may not know for a few days. We're gonna know a lot quicker than that. Sorry about my mother. She's in pain. The things that she said about Kendall, I know that deep down inside that she doesn't believe that. The only thing that matters now is what the judge believes. Judge Pearson is ready for you now. We've heard from a number of witnesses today, and there was quite a lot of talk about forgiveness. I listened closely, Mrs. Slater, to what everyone had to say, and I've taken their statements into account. But the fact of the matter is, you've pled guilty to murder in the first degree. And despite extenuating circumstances, which I understand are very real, the law remains quite clear. I've reached my verdict. Will the defendant please rise? The taking of a human life is the most serious of crimes I am called upon to adjudicate. And while the stated reasons for the defendant's actions, that is, her belief that her infant son had died because of Adam Chandler's actions, is tragic, I give it no weight in calculating her sentence. Conversely, the defendant's attempt to flee, I have given weight to. Kendall Hart Slater, having pled guilty to the charge of murder in the first degree of Stuart Chandler, I hereby sentence you to incarceration in the state penitentiary for the remainder of your life. A minimum of 15 years must be served before being considered for parole. The defendant will be handed over immediately and transferred to the facility. Court is adjourned. All rise. Listen, we are going to appeal this. We will get it lowered. Kendall, this is not over. It's not, you hear me? Can, can you just go, please? Can I go now? Even a goodbye? It's what you wanted. Kendall! One last question. Kendall, can we get a quick comment? Kendall, one question, please. Kendall, just a couple of quick questions. 
Kendall, do you have any regrets? Well, why isn't your mother here? Why didn't you go through with the trial? All right, folks, can we back it up, please? So do you intend to appeal? Absolutely, we intend to appeal. Mrs. Slater has two young children that need her. What happened to Stuart Chandler was a tragic accident, but it does not merit the harsh sentence that the judge handed down today. Let's get her out of here. Ten thirty-three. Gunshots fired in the courthouse hallway. We need an ambulance. One down. One suspect in custody. I need you to get her inside right now. Clear this hall. This is Hubbard. I'm going to take the prisoner out the back way. No, no please, please, Jesse. I, I have to know that Mar Marissa is okay first. She's alive. Okay. Hey, so Marissa's en route to the ER. Mary and Chandler's headed to the station for booking. I'd like to ride with you to transport Kendall. No, I'm gonna need you at the station. Keep your eye on Mary and make sure she's safe. Hi. The hatred in Marion's eyes. Her husband is gone because of me. Marissa is hurt, and the, the whole thing is my fault. Don't think like that. You're gonna need all your strength for what we have to do next. Just let them take me away. I'll be all right. We said our goodbyes. Just go home, be with our boys. I'm not giving up on you. I'm gonna take you home to your family. When I was in that coma, those months seemed like seconds to me. I didn't have any concept of time. I wish the next 15 years could be like that. I could just close my eyes one second, and the next I would open them, and you would be there. You'd be smiling down at me. Yeah. Big fat beard, belly, and gray hair, what? <laughs> I think you look very debonair, even with a big beer belly. And you will look even more gorgeous with gray hair. Oh, no, stop that. <sighs> this was nice, even for a moment. It's just the kind of escape I needed. Well, then we'll do it again. You go to sleep, and when you wake up, it's all better. It won't be 15 years. I'm ready. I'm gonna close my eyes. And when I open them, I need you to be gone. Please.
Why are you still here? I'm not sure. I uh, think I'm trying to make sense out of all this. It's not easy. I suppose you'll uh, blame me for this as well. You lost your brother. I lost my wife. My kids lost their mom. Now, Crystal may lose her daughter, too. I'm all out of blame, madam. Mm. All out of blame. I know it's going to be difficult for you while she's gone. I'm here 24-7 if you need me. You know how much I love those boys. Yes, I do. So, you need me to stay the night? No. Okay, I'll be back in the morning then. Actually, Rachel, I'm not going to be needing you anymore. What? I'm sorry. You're... You're firing me? I'm going to pay for the year and uh, make sure you find another position. I know it's tough out there. I don't understand. I'm going to be here full time. Taking care of the boys, you know. Out of the nursery if I have to, but uh, that's what Kendall would have wanted. On my own. If that's what you want. I'm going to miss those guys. Okay. They're great kids. Yes, they are. I'm sorry that you and Kendall are going through this. You can call me if you change your mind. Come on. Bye. Jesse. Uh, David and Jake both said that she's going to be fine. You know that bullet just missed her heart. Oh, that's good. Yeah. So how, how you doing? Good, I'm good. Yeah. So I'm going to start on that appeal first thing in the morning. I've got a couple ideas for some angles that we Not can work. Tonight. I thought I'd... Yeah. I understand. <laughs> It's gonna be kind of weird, huh, not having Kendall here. Probably gonna need some extra help with the boys. No. I'm gonna take care of those kids myself. What's mommy? So, guys, do you remember how I told you that mom was gonna maybe go away for a while? Well, that time is now. But we can go see her every week and we can talk to her on the phone. Well, I'm gonna be here a lot. Gonna work out of the house. All right, so I'm going to be around all the time. Mm. And hey, even if your mom isn't here, you can't see ba. her, that doesn't mean that she won't be here. Ba, ba, ba. And she's going to get a little upset if you throw her pillows around. Daddy. She'll be here. You know why? Ba, she's right Daddy. there. Ba, Daddy. Daddy's going to take care of her. And your mom loves you very much. Both of you guys, you know that, right? Always been your heart. Ba, ba. Yeah. Zach, can I, uh, can I get you anything? Can I make you something to eat or maybe a drink? God knows you could probably use it. Actually, I'd, I'd like to be alone with the boys right now. Well, if you need anything. Thank you. Thank you.